In this video, we're going to look at a surprising result, which has to do with expanding the series for this particular function right over here. If we expand this as a series in the variable x, thinking of c as a parameter, we're going to get as coefficients of the powers x to the n polynomials in this parameter c. Now let's go ahead and plug this in and see what these actually look like. It's going to turn out to be that these polynomials really have some really interesting properties. They go by the name Fibonacci polynomials. And the reason is if you actually take a look at these polynomials, if you plug in 1, you get 1, and then c, you get 1, c squared, you get 1 plus 1, which is 2, c cubed plus 2c, you get 3, and then 5, and then 8, etc. They generate the Fibonacci numbers. In this video, we're going to actually see a lot about these Fibonacci polynomials, the different interesting things that pop up, and really strange and interesting properties that they satisfy. And they're all going to illuminate different techniques that we can use to actually get explicit expressions for coefficients of series and relationships between them. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. So today is all about this really fascinating series and really understanding these coefficients that appear. So the first thing we want to do is just expand this and see what we can get. So if we call a sub k the kth coefficient when we expand this as a series in x, one thing we can at least get off the bat is a recurrence relation for the, the polynomials a sub k, which are polynomials in the variable c, the parameter c. Multiplying, we get that 1 minus c x minus c squared times the series is identically the series 1. So if we extract the x to the kth coefficient, we're going to get the expression on the left, which is going to have to be 0 for large values of k. And so we get that a sub k is c times a sub k minus 1 plus a sub k minus 2. And so that gives us a way to generate these polynomials in the variable c. This is one particular technique that's very, very useful for series and actually figuring out what the coefficients for series are. So in this case, it works out that the series, the coefficients of the series will be generated by these things. And we actually see this relationship. So for example, if you look at the third term here, c squared plus 1, that is c times the term before it, which is c plus 1. Right? And c cubed plus 2c is actually c times c squared plus 1 plus c. Okay, so this recurrence actually gives us this generating of all of the polynomials that we see in this variable c. But it'd be nice to have an actual explicit expression for each of these polynomials directly, these interesting Fibonacci polynomials. So what we're going to do is instead of using just this recurrence relation, we're going to figure out what these polynomials are explicitly as a polynomial in the variable c. We're going to do that by doing an interesting expansion of the series, taking things one by one, but doing things in a way that's sort of non-traditional. And this is a really good technique to use when dealing with series. Okay, so how are we going to treat this series? Well, the first thing we're going to do is think about writing it just like we'd write the sum of a geometric series. Um, so we're going to clump all of the variable pieces together by writing this as 1 minus the quantity x times x plus c. Right, so then thinking about the expansion then, we're going to expand powers of what's in the red box right here. So this as a series will be the sum k equals 0 to infinity of the expression x times x plus c all raised to the k, which we can write as x to the k times x plus c to the k. Okay, so if we want the coefficient of x to the n, which is the nth polynomial that we're generating as a coefficient, and that polynomial is a polynomial in the variable c, we're going to extract that from each of these summands. We'll use the notation bracket x to the n for the coefficient of x to the n, now, if you look at this expression in the series, when k is larger than n, we have an x to the n times x plus c to some power. So all of those terms are going to have uh, variables that have powers of x larger than n. So we only need to extract the x to the nth coefficient 
from the first n terms in this series, which we can do one by one. Now the x to the nth coefficient of x to the k times x plus c to the k is the x to the n minus kth coefficient in x plus c all raised to the k. So we can do that one by one, and let's take a look at the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 and x plus c all raised to the k. Okay, we can extract that using the binomial theorem. It's going to be k choose n minus k times c to a specific exponent, which is going to be the exponent k that we're raising x plus c to minus the n minus k. Okay, so now if we rearrange this, now first, the binomial coefficient only survives when k is larger or equal to n minus k. So this sum actually only starts from when k is at least n over 2. So k starts at the ceiling of n over 2. We go to n and we get k choose n minus k times c to the, if we uh, clean up the exponent, we get 2k minus n. So there's an explicit expression for these polynomials in terms of the variable c, these Fibonacci polynomials. And actually this gives us a cool identity too, because we knew when we plugged in one, we get the Fibonacci numbers. So now we actually can express Fibonacci numbers as sums of binomial coefficients because of this. That's kind of a cool consequence. So this is a kind of surprising thing to get as a result, but it came about by really thinking about the series in a compact way. Um, and we should actually check that what we did actually matches the coefficients that we get. So here's an example. Um, we picked n equals 10. And the expression that we get as our polynomial actually works out to exactly what we had in our series. So it sounds like we're doing good work. Let's do another check just to check when um, n is odd because we had the ceiling factor that were, was involved there. The ceiling of 11 over 2 is 6. Um, and if we change things up here, we do see, hopefully, that we get the right thing. And I think it works out. We see these coefficients right over here, these descending powers of c that descend by um, 2 each, and we get exactly the polynomial that we have in the expression when we expanded the series. Great, very cool. So we're able to figure out an explicit expression. Now, for an interesting surprising relationship between these coefficients that actually can be proved using very interesting techniques. So let's take two consecutive terms in the series and square them. So one of the coefficients was c and the next one was c squared plus 1. So we're going to square those and add. If we square and add, we end up with, let's see, Take, take, take a look. We get c to the fourth plus 3c squared plus 1. Okay, let's go back to our series. That's actually one of the coefficients. So the coefficient of x to the 1 squared plus the coefficient of x to the 2 squared is the coefficient of x to the 4. That's a weird phenomenon. Um, let's actually see if that carries out if we go further. So let's take the x squared coefficient, the c or c squared plus 1, and then take the next coefficient, which happened to be uh, c cubed plus 2c. Let's square that and add those and see what we get. We end up with, scrolling down, c to the 6 plus 5c to the 4th plus 6c squared plus 1. Okay. Let's take a look at our series. Huh, that's the coefficient of x to the 6. So you square the x squared coefficient, you square the x cubed coefficient, add, you get the x to the 6 coefficient. What is going on here? What is happening? Okay, so if we're going to try to even attempt to prove something like this, there are techniques you can use to actually get relationships like this using matrices. So this is a technique that's very, very useful for series in general. What we're going to do is start by drawing this matrix right over here. Now let's square it and see what the entries look like. So squaring it, we multiply it by itself. Now this is not generated from some random um, occurrence. 
We got this by actually extracting it from the series itself, the one and the C in the second row. We square it, square it we get 1C, C, C squared plus 1. Okay, now if we cube A, that's the square times A itself, we'll end up with something that looks like the following. We'll get 1C squared, C squared, C squared plus 1, C squared plus 1, and then as this last term, it'll turn out if we actually do the multiplication, we get c cubed plus 2c plus uh, c cubed plus 2c. Okay, so something interesting is happening here. So in this product, the first, the top right, left corner should have been c actually, not a one. Okay, so in general, we notice we were getting terms in the actual series expansion. We had a one and then a C and then a C squared plus one and then a C cubed plus two C. So in general, you can actually prove inductively that A to the N plus two is gonna have this form. A N, A N plus one, A N plus one, A N plus two. So fascinating thing. So if you look at the square of this, it should then have as its terms A two N plus two, a 2n plus 3, a 2n plus 3, a 2n plus 4. Why would something like that be useful in the type of expression we were trying to prove? Well, a to the n plus 2 as a matrix squared is the product of that matrix with itself. But it's also the same as a to the 2n plus 4. If we write out this product, we'll get some terms in the bottom corners. But on the top corner, we get the dot product of the first row of a n plus 2 with the first column, which is a n squared plus a n plus 1 squared. But that has to be the same as the top left entry of a to the 2 n plus 4 because they're the same matrices. So we get that the sum of the squares of these terms actually is a 2 n plus 2. This is a cool technique for being able to extract relationships using series by putting successive terms into matrices. So cool properties of these Fibonacci polynomials, check them out. If you want to learn more, definitely do a search on the internet. There's so many interesting algebraic and combinatorial properties of them.